In the last lecture, we have studied about Chomsky normal form and we have also studied how to convert a given CFG to Chomsky normal form. So, in this lecture, we will be studying about another normal form which is known as the Griebeck normal form. We shall see what is this and we will also see how to convert a given context free grammar to Griebeck normal form. Alright, so let's see what is a Griebeck normal form. A context free grammar is in Griebeck normal form if the productions are in the following forms A gives B or A gives B C1 C2 up till Cn, where A C1 till Cn are non terminals and B is a terminal symbol. So if you have a production of this form where A, which is a non terminal symbol, gives B, which is a terminal symbol, this is in Griebeck normal form. Or if you have a production of this form where a non terminal symbol A gives a terminal symbol followed by a set of non terminal symbols, then also it is in Griebeck normal form. So if you have productions of these two forms, then they are said to be in Griebeck normal form. And if they are not in this form, then they are not in Griebeck normal form. So now we shall see the steps that we need to follow in order to convert a given CFG to its equivalent Griebeck normal form. So here we have the steps that we need in order to convert a given CFG to GNF. So step number one, check if the given CFG has unit productions or null productions and remove if there are any. So you have to first check in the given CFG are there any unit productions or null productions. If you don't know what are these, I request you to watch the previous videos where I have discussed about unit productions and null productions and also we have discussed how to remove the unit productions and null productions in one of the previous lectures. So you can watch that and using that technique you have to remove any unit productions or null productions that are present. Alright, so step number two, check whether the CFG is already in Chomsky normal form and convert it to Chomsky normal form if it is not. So you have to check that the given CFG is it already in Chomsky normal form or not. And if you don't know about Chomsky normal form, I advise you to watch the previous lecture where we have discussed about Chomsky normal form and we have also discussed the steps that we need to follow in order to convert a given context free grammar to Chomsky normal form. So in step two, we have to check whether the given CFG is already in Chomsky normal form. And if it is not, you have to convert it using the technique that we have discussed in the previous lecture. And then step three says, change the names of the non-terminal symbols into some A of I in ascending order of I. Now, what do we mean by this? We will see this using an example. All right, so here we have an example where we have a context free grammar driven and the productions are of this form s gives c a and also b b b gives small b and also s b c gives small b and a gives small a so here the capital letters denote the non terminal symbols and then the small letters they denote the terminal symbols so let us just see step number 1 we have to check if there are any unit productions or null productions. If you see that in these productions, there are no unit productions or null productions. So step one, we don't have to do it. And step number two says check whether it is already in Chomsky normal form. So if you remember the rules that we need to follow in order to check whether a given contextual grammar is in Chomsky normal form. And, and using that, if we see, we see that this is already in Chomsky normal form. So step two also is done. Now step three says, Change the names of the non-terminal symbols into some A of I in ascending order of I. Now, how do we do this? For doing this, we see that we have the non-terminal symbols S, C, A, B in these productions. And all this, we have to replace it with some A of I. And let's see how we can do this. So here, we will replace S with A1 and then C with A2 and then A with A3 and B with A4. So this is how we will replace the names of these non-terminal symbols using A of I, where I is from 1 to 4 for this particular example. Now you cannot just randomly give any names to these non-terminal symbols, but you have to follow it in ascending order starting from the very first production. So it's not that you just see S, okay, let me call it A of 1, and then 
here I have B, so let me call it A of 2. It's not like that. You have to first see the production, the first production, and you have to follow it in the correct order. So here we have S, so I call it A of 1, and then the next one is C, I call it A of 2, A, I call it A of 3, and B, I call it A of 4. And if you come to the next production, it's B, we have already defined what is B, and the next one is S, S also we have already given the name and then C and A also we have already given. So we have to replace the variables like this in ascending order. Now let's see what will be the equivalent production that we get after we replace these non-terminal symbols with these names A1, A2, A3 and A4. So this is what we get. A1 gives A2, A3 and A4, A4. So if you see why did we get this? S was A1. That is why I wrote here A1. C was A2. That is why it's A2 here and A was A3, that is why it's A3 here, and both B's were A4, that's why you got A4, A4 here. And the rest of the things also, when we replace it, this is what we get. Now let's see what is the next step. Step number 4, it says, alter the rules so that the non-terminals are in ascending order, such that if the production is of the form AI gives AJX, then I should always be less than J, and it should never be greater than or equal to j. I should never be greater than or equal to j. So what do we mean by this? Let us look at this production. If you are taking this production, let's see and try to put it in the form of ai gives ajx. So here what is our ai? It is a1. And what is our aj? It is a2. And you have to just look at the first variable and the next one that follows it. You don't have to worry about the things after that. So here your i is 1 and your j is 2. So our rule says that i should always be less than j. It should always be in ascending order. So let us see if it is the case here or not. So here i is 1 and j is 2. i is definitely less than j. 1 is less than 2. So it is following the rule which is mentioned over here. And let us see for the next one. a1 gives a4, A4. So you have to just look at A1 and this A4 over here. So here I is 1 and J is 4. So 1 is less than 4. It is also in ascending order. So it is following the rule that is mentioned in step number 4. So we are fine with this first production. And now let us check for the second production. Here it says A4 gives B. So what about this one? So when I already told you about the rules of Greyback normal form in the beginning of this lecture. We saw that if a non-terminal symbol directly gives a terminal symbol, then that is already in Greyback normal form. So this part is already in Greyback normal form. You don't have to worry. So now we have to look at this part. So in this part it says A4 gives A1, A4. Now let us see if it is following step number 4 or not. So here your I is 4 and J is 1. So here we see that i is greater than j. 4 is greater than 1. So we already said in step number 4 the rule said that it should never be greater than or equal to j. It is not following the rule that is mentioned in step number 4. So we need to resolve this portion. Now let's see how we can resolve it. We have to resolve it by replacing the problematic variable with some other values. So let's see how we can do that. So here, let me just write down the rule that is causing the problem. It is A4 gives B A1 A4. Now, if you look at this, the problem is caused by this A1 over here. So what I will do is, I will replace this A1 with some other value. Now, what is that some other value with which I can replace A1? I have to replace it with the value of A1 that is given over here. So, let us replace it and see if it is going to follow the rule or not. So, I'll write A4. It gives. Now, this B, I'll write it as it is. And then, instead of A1, I will write A2, A3 and A4, A4. So, first, let me write this one. A2, A3. So, I'll write A2, A3. And this A4, which is here, I have to write it down as it is. A4. And also, it gives A4, A4. So instead of this A1, I will put A4, 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 A4. And this A4, which is here, I will write it down as it is. A4. 
All right, so now we have this production. Now let us see if it is following the rules that was mentioned in step four or not. A4 gives B, that is fine. Now A4 gives A2, A3, A4. Now let us check here our I is four and our J is two. Again, we see that I, which is four, is greater than J, which is two. So this is not allowed. So it is still not following the rule of step number four. So what I'll do is I will replace the value of A2 because this was the variable that is causing the problem. I will replace the value of A2 with some other value in order to make it follow rule number four. So what is the value of A2 with which I can replace it? A2 gives B. Now let me try to replace A2 with B. So this A4, let me write it. A4, it gives B, this B as it is. And instead of A2, I will write B now. B and the rest of the things I'll write as it is. A3, A4, and this part also I'll write it as it is. A4, A4, A4. Now let's see if it is following our rules or not. So here we see that A4 gives B. Okay, that is fine. And A4 gives B, A3, A4. Now if you remember the rules of Griebeck normal form, if a non-terminal symbol gives a terminal symbol followed by anything, then that is in Griebeck normal form. So let me just take you up there once. So if you see here, a CFG is in Griebeck normal form if it is giving a terminal symbol directly or if it gives a terminal symbol followed by any other variables, then also it is in Griebeck normal form. So we see that this part is in Griebeck normal form now. B and B, A3, A4 are already in Griebeck normal form. Now we have to check this part. It says A4 gives A4, A4, A4. Here our I is 4 and J is also 4. So here we are getting a condition, a situation where I is equal to J. So that is also not allowed. In step 4 it says that it should never be I is greater than or equal to J. So here we are getting a condition where I and J are equal. So when we get this, what we have to do? When we get this kind of condition, this kind of condition is known as left recursion. So our step number five is to remove the left recursion. So there are certain steps that we need to follow in order to remove left recursions and that we will be discussing in the next lecture. So I hope this was clear to you. So you have to follow steps number one to four in order to convert a given CFG to its equivalent Greyback normal form. And now it is not complete because we have encountered a left recursion over here. And in the next lecture, we will be discussing how to remove the left recursion. And after removing the left recursion, what we get will be the CFG that is completely converted to its equivalent Greyback normal form. So thank you for watching this and see you in the next one where we will be discussing about removal of left recursions.